Welcome to our lecture online. Whenever an object is under tension or compression, you will have internal stresses. And those are both normal and shear stresses. Now, how do we illustrate that in a particular case? So here what we can imagine is that we have a small volume element. So let's call this a small dV or delta V. I won't call it dV yet. We'll do that later. So let's just simply call it a small delta V. And so notice that we have surface areas, the cross-sectional surface area of the small dV here can be called the delta A in the xy plane. Here we have a delta A in the xz plane, and here we have a delta A in the yz plane. And on each surface of that cube, we can identify one normal stress and two shear stresses. For example, on the top surface here, which is therefore in the xy plane, we have a stress that's perpendicular to that surface, which is called the normal stress in the z direction. And then we have the two shear stresses, one in the y direction and one in the x direction. Notice the notation, we use tau for the shear stresses, a sigma for the normal stress, z because it's pointing in the direction of the z axis, and then we have zy and zx, those are the two shear stresses pointing in the y and in the x direction. These are caused by forces at that location in the y direction and in the z direction. If we now look at the side surface right here in the xz plane, we have the normal, the normal stress pointing in the y direction, there we have sigma sub y, and then we have the two shear stresses, one pointing in the z direction, one pointing in the x direction, and so the subscripts are tau yz and tau yx. And then the front surface right here, which is the, the plane, the yz plane, because that is in the yz direction right here in the yz plane, we have the normal stress perpendicular to the surface called sigma sub x, and then we have the two shear stresses, one in the y direction, one in the z direction, so those are called tau xy and tau xz. So notice that we have nine shear stresses or nine shear stress components for the three surfaces. On each surface we have one perpendicular and two shear stresses, and together forming nine different components of the stress in a particular volume and then of course when we shrink that down as the delta V goes to zero we'll have at a singular point somewhere inside the material nine stress components that we'll have to deal with and then later we'll show you how to use the tensor notation in order to do that. But at least now we're aware of that and so we can then continue with gaining understanding what we mean by the, the stresses inside material due to the applied forces and that is how it's done.